I think we were sitting at this table, Louise, when, when we first had the idea for Anthropocene. With a bowl of soup rather than a cup of tea. Yes, uh -huh, <laughs> soup and bread. Every discussion that Stuart and I have about opera, we always come back to Macbeth. <laughs> it doesn't matter what we're working on, Macbeth somehow becomes part of our point of reference. We probably do a lot of just blethering, really, and you know, about things that aren't that don't end up being in the piece. But you just never know when the conversation is going to turn to something that's really relevant to what we're doing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll just, um. I'll just move them to yours. <laughs> When Stuart and I are working on an opera together, and when we worked on Anthropocene together, we had this long period, and I can't remember how long, how many meetings, and we talk about the story, the characters, we talk about politics, um, we talked about landscape, themes, things that we've read, and then Stuart will send me music, we, we exchange uh, stories, we exchanged quite a lot of scientific articles. We've talked a lot about uh, science fiction movies, Alien, Moon, uh, The Martian, some sort of real classics and some quite modern. Yeah, Sunshine uh, as well. Sunshine, yeah. that's right. We exchanged a lot of images with this uh, this particular project because how it looked was very much uh, a part of our imaginings. And then I go away and I work, but we're never really completely out of touch. Louise sends me chunks of libretto rather than the whole thing in one go. Uh, and then I will make some suggestions, you know, like maybe we could put these lines together to make an aria or a duet. Maybe this character should say this, but somewhere else. It's a little more difficult the other way around because, of course, nobody gets to hear the music until it's finished, until it's played. Uh, but I can, uh, some bits I can mock up on the computer and send them to Louise to give her an idea of what I'm doing and what I've been thinking. And there were some sections where I just sent them to Louise and said, this is the kind of atmosphere that I'm imagining for the start of this scene. And that would then inform her way of thinking about the writing of it. It's been such a great process, actually, because working with eight characters, which is the most that we've ever jointly worked mm. on, uh, it just requires so much more. And that mm. interweaving and thinking about where they are on stage, yeah. not losing somebody. <laughs> One of the big compositional challenges of opera is to be able to write ensembles. Imagining the sound and imagining a way of crystallising those emotional trajectories that the characters have. Um, the hard bit of it is making that then make sense along with the words. So that's, that's the thing that I've learned to do with this piece. It's quite nerve-wracking, the, the whole process of putting an opera together, not just for me, but for performers as well, I think. Um, and I don't really get to discover whether it all works the way I wanted it to or not until the dress rehearsal, really. That's when I put the score away, um, close the score, just sit back and listen and watch and try and work out what I've done. You know? The first time that I see the actual performance with everybody in costume, it is, uh, it is exhilarating. It's really exhilarating. Funnily enough, the moment I look forward to the most is when it's all finished and the curtain goes down and it's like, okay, phew, it's done. Because that's the end of the journey in a way for me. That's where it, uh, where it culminates. I've never seen anybody reading one of my books. I've never gone into a cafe or got onto a bus and seen somebody reading one of my novels. So to see the opera, ah, it's quite amazing. Something came out of your head and then lots of people worked on it with you and there it is.